The most compelling action is on CBS Sports. to the basketball capital of the world where today the road to the final four stops right there the rca dome in indianapolis if you thought indiana already had enough storied hoop tales think again because we are poised to put some more shining moments in your basketball memory banks so go ahead feel the excitement go ahead and take part in the madness go ahead and be a kid again like the rest of us and cheer for the game which somehow always seems to make us smile. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and welcome to the Final Four show. Today we have a super semi-final doubleheader. The first game tips at 542 as Arizona makes its second Final Four appearance in the last four years. The Wildcats meet Coach Dean Smith's well-heeled North Carolina squad. UNC is making its 13th trip to the Final Four, second only to UCLA's 14. Then, 35 minutes after game one, the second national semifinal tips off with the University of Minnesota making its first ever appearance in the final four. The Golden Gophers look to continue their dream season against Kentucky. The defending national champion Wildcats have won six titles and are on the road to repeat. Joining me, a couple of fellas who know a thing or two about big games. Former Ohio State star Clark Kellogg was the 1982 Big Ten Player of the Year. And speaking of repeats, Duke coach, my, coach Mike Krzyzewski led his Blue Devils to a pair of national titles in 91 and 92 and has made seven final four appearances, third most all time. And what's it like, Mike? Well, first <laughs> of all, I like that footage. Uh, <laughs> but if I'm a coach right now, I'm, I'm anxious to get going, but I'm nervous about my team. I'm looking and seeing how they're feeling so that I might add those finishing touches to get them at their best just before they take the court. And if you're a player, what are you thinking right now? Well, one thing for sure, Pat, the media requests, obviously the ticket requests, concerns about family travel plans, those are all in your rearview mirror. As a player now, you might have some anxious moments early on, but once that first good lather is worked up, it'll all be about basketball one-on-one, -on -one, taking right. your guy, defending, scoring, and rebounding. One team has already arrived here in the Dome in North Carolina just a few minutes ago, got off the bus underneath here. The Tar Heels winners of 16 in a row, guys. And what do you see there? They got their faces on. <laughs> faces oh. and music. I wonder what kind of music they listen to. A variety. None of the coaches ever have those headsets on. <laughs> it's jazz, gospel, maybe even a little rap going on in there. Dean Smith does not travel with his team traditionally, and so he is not there. He'll come another way, lets his players arrive by themselves, and leaves them alone with their thoughts for the time being. Our second national semifinal features a battle of number one seeds whose styles of play are as diverse as their head coaches. Yesterday, George Raveling spoke with Minnesota head coach Clem Haskins and Kentucky top cat Rick Pitino. 60 games this season's NCAA tournament has had its fill of thrills and chills. With three games to go, Clark Kellogg looks at how it has all unfolded. The tournament recap is sponsored by Pizza Hut, a proud sponsor of the NCAA. Pizza Hut, making it great again and again. So far, it's been a great tournament for fans and announcers to watch even if those making the plays weren't looking. Arizona passed by its opponents. 
while Providence backed its foes into the paint and used a friendly roll. Boy, can KU's Jock Vaughn deliver the orange. And Friars guard Jamel Thomas would not be two-timed in this game. All eyes certainly were on the nation's player of the year, Tim Duncan. He posted impressive numbers against 7'3", Brad Millard. Now, how does a player from Wake Forest prepare for a Sequoia-sized opponent? I don't think it's something you can go out and work on. I don't think you can find 7'3 guys and walk around in the street. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's do that. But in the second round, Stanford's knight of the round ball wielded a deadly outside jumper to eliminate Wake Forest and put the wraps on Duncan's college career. While Wake was one of four North Carolina schools to make the tourney, there was quite a quartet representing their immediate neighbors to the south. The ACC's Clemson Tigers won a pair before falling to Final Four bound Minnesota. Charleston Southern was a game representative from the Big South Conference, reaching a high despite a first round loss to UCLA. But it was the performance of another Charleston school which stole the show. The College of Charleston lifted the players and fans to a euphoric state. And Coach Crest was well, Coach Crest. This is a Concord. These guys fly it. I'm the steward. I serve the chips and the cokes, and I'm loving every minute of big time basketball. And now it's the second round. Unfortunately, College of Charleston lost in the second round, but it was a better showing than the state's top seeded team, South Carolina. The Gamecocks lost to a Coppin State team, which was not trying to make a statement. Joined now by Coach Mitchell from Coppin State. I'll make an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Coach? I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, Coach Mitchell, we're glad you made it as well. Making like that famous choo-choo and proving that it could was Chattanooga. We want to get to Indianapolis just like the rest of the team that's playing for the same thing. We have, all of us have the same common goal. We're thinking Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> but alas, Chattanooga was derailed, getting knocked off track by Providence. One team with high expectations was top-ranked Kansas, led by senior point guard Jacques Vaughn. But the Jayhawks were not in Kansas anymore. Actually, they were going back to Lawrence after the shots wouldn't fall, and they were bounced by Arizona in the Southeast Regional Semifinal. The Jayhawks turned the ball over 20 times, ending the season in which they won a school record 34 games and the Big 12's regular season and tournament titles. It was not one of their most colorful finishes. It's been a dream year for me. It's been a dream team with the kind of relationships I have, and yet you want to win. And uh, we didn't do that, and uh, we've got to try to help each other right now, and uh, I do mean each other. The Providence Friars, meanwhile, went buffet-style to the dinner table. We have a big Italian population. We brought our own macaroni. We also brought some marinara sauce from our mayor. He guaranteed a victory. There must have been something in that sauce. The Friars blew out higher-seeded Marquette in round one, stunned Duke in the second round, and halted the Chattanooga Express in the regional semifinals. But all the while, Lou Olson had his eye on the prize, and his Wildcats were streaking in their own right playing in four tight games, but showing the boys to hang in long enough to win them all. Speaking of hanging around, the legendary Dean Smith reached for yet another milestone. His Tar Heels had an opening round scare against Fairfield, but in the end were too strong for their 16th seeded foe. Then in the second round, UNC corralled the Colorado Buffaloes, and the rest made all-time history. It's not called the Sweet 16 for nothing. The first night featured a classic between Iowa State and the UCLA Bruins.
point game, it's a dollar up and in. And Minnesota and Clemson also had an animated meeting. Thomas fights for the ball, and it's picked up by Buckner. He goes into the front court, gives it over, and in goes a basket. It's the highest of all game, and we go into overtime. And seven, six, five. Jackson against Cole, crossover. Spins, left side of the foul line with two. Fade away, no good. Rebound, Clemson. Double overtime here in San Antonio. But through it all, last year's champs have perhaps the most to trump. Kentucky, that's my team, there's no doubt. I said Kentucky, let's go. We got the cats in the house, so come on, Wildcats. Wildcats, let me hear you make noise. Get up and jump, scream, shout for our boys. Yeah. Come on and shout Kentucky, C-A-T-S, cat. I want to hear Kentucky, C-A-T-S, cat. The tournament recap has been sponsored by Pizza Hut, a proud sponsor of the NCAA. Pizza Hut, making it great again and again. And Indianapolis has been a great host to all of us here at the Final Four festivities. And there you see, we're right inside there. The RCA Dome, right in the middle of Indianapolis. And guess who else is here? Dean Smith has arrived, and he spoke with Andrea Joyce. <laughs> Coach, you expressed concern this week about Arizona's quickness. More specifically, how do you slow down Miles Simon? Well, we thought about it, but there isn't a lot you can do to make people quicker. I, we probably will not get out and pressure them because they can penetrate so well, and they're so quick to the ball. They're big people, too, so maybe that's why they're here. Your fourth Final Four team of the 90s. How do you gauge the emotional temperature of this team? I don't. I uh, don't try to. I hope we're attacking it like we did our last 16 games, and try to be ready to play and take them like we're just playing Arizona here in Indianapolis and uh, we hope we play another game. Okay coach, good luck today. Thank Thanks. You, Dean Smith in the building. Welcome back to the Final Four show. Joining us now for our annual visit is Cedric Dempsey, Executive Director of the NCAA. Nice to see you here. Congratulations on a great tournament so far. Thank you, Pat. It's a pleasure to be here. I feel like I'm part of the committee. You are. <laughs> you are. You are. You are. You are definitely part of the, the committee. The only advantage is I'm in a lot better shape than Rabbi. <laughs> Wait a minute. We got to up for a <laughs> Let's talk about a couple of issues facing the NCAA now. You passed legislation to allow students to work for pay. Uh, on paper, it looks great. Uh, do you have a formula for it, and how do you think it'll work? Well, I think this is the first piece of legislation that...
Welcome back to Indiana, indeed, and the RCA Dome. You're looking live as the crowd poises itself for a tip-off at 5.42 Eastern time. Our first game, North Carolina and Arizona. And you can feel the excitement build in here. This place will be jammed pack with basketball fans. Pat O'Brien here along with Coach K and Clark Kellogg. Let's go right down to Michelle Tafoya for pregame preparation. Michelle? All right, Pat. Well, Arizona comes into this game very loose and relaxed. As we mentioned earlier, the only injury to speak of is lower back stiffness to Miles Simon. He's been dealing with that since January. It's not expected to be a problem. But something that could affect Arizona, as well as every other team playing here, are the basketballs and baskets with which they're playing. Now, players like broken-in basketballs, and these are, they came from host school Butler, which was responsible for quote-unquote roughing up these balls for a couple days. But the backboards and rims are brand new and very tight, and that's something that the NABC Board of Directors thinks could affect shooting. Some of the premier shooters here talked about the baskets after yesterday's shoot-around. Minnesota's Sam Jacobson described these baskets as delicate, but Arizona's Mike Bibby said the rims are shooters' rims. Now, the NABC will certainly observe how the rims and backboards affect play today, but CM Newton of the NCAA Men's Basketball Committee does not anticipate any kind of a problem. Now, let's send it over to Andrea Joyce. All right, Michelle, well, the Tar Heels arrived here about an hour ago. Everybody's healthy. Antoine Jameson still getting some treatment for a back sprain, but he's ready to go. The bus ride over, we are told, was very quiet, even with that 16-game winning streak. This is not a boisterous group. In fact, late in the season, one of the biggest concerns North Carolina had was about overconfidence. That's why they're treating this weekend as a completely new season. Even in the locker room, they're referring to this as the Indianapolis Invitational, kind of a mini tournament. And the players have gotten the message, Antoine Jameson, and told us they know that if they feel unbeatable, they will be vulnerable. The last time he felt invincible was just before the season opening loss to Arizona. He promises a completely different mindset today. And Pat, they say it's not about being humble, but it is all about being hungry. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Andrea. Michelle as well. We'll talk to you later in the day. You know, who's the country's number one March Madness fan? Well, it's none other than President Bill Clinton. The president told Richard Schlesinger and Thalia Shuras of the CBS Eye on People cable channel that because of his knee injury, he's seen more games this year than ever. I love basketball. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm always happy this time of year, you know. And actually, one of the benefits of my injury is that I have been laid up. I have seen the NCAA uh, from the you know from the beginning I've seen a huge number of the games I've seen a fair number of the NIT games I've seen a lot of the women's games which I really enjoy so I'm really uh, I, I've gotten to see all this uh, March Madness it's been wonderful this is an interesting tournament this year I can't tell who's gonna win usually I have a feeling mm -hmm. you don't have a feeling this does what a, one of well the you know Kentucky is the most tournament uh, in the last couple of years Kentucky has played at a very soaring level at the end of the year and so you have to give them a little advantage but then they had to reconstitute this team from last year when they won the championship and it's very hard to repeat but they're very good minnesota has an amazing combination of depth mm -hmm. and strength and uh and just basic good basketball and this carolina team you know which started off losing all those games now has more juice than, than uh, even the, a lot of Dean Smith's teams. I mean, they do all these, they, they do alley-oops, they do all kinds of, you know, they're an interesting team. And, and I must say, I've underestimated Arizona twice now. If you watch those last two games, I just, you know, underestimated them. He knows his hoops. The entire Clinton interview can be seen on Off 10th, one of many new programs, beginning Monday on the CBS Eye on People cable channel. As always, this year's tournament has been filled with emotional moments, but for many, the most memorable was when first-year UCLA head coach Steve Lavin spoke following the Bruins' loss to Minnesota. You just watch your team has been through so much adversity, you know, with the loss of their head coach, just to share that and experience that. And I knew they weren't going to get that opportunity, so it just made it tough because we've been through so much together. Let's join George Raveling, who's standing by live with Coach Lavin downstairs in our CBS locker room. George, you're on. Steve, too. The young man starting as a, as a point guard as a freshman. When's the last time they've had a freshman quarterback start in the Rose Bowl? Rare indeed. In fact, never. Back in a moment.
One of those days, and it won't be long now, before the final four commences here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. And we're joined by everybody up here on the set. <laughs> Quickly, Quinn, what's your headline on the game? What should we watch for? Size and experience too much for Arizona. How about you, George? Speed and quickness versus size and strength. Arizona overcomes. Mike, as the fans look at this game, what do you want them to see? If I was watching one player, I'd watch how Miles Simons reacts for Arizona and how North Carolina tries to stop him. Only thing I can say, this game will be as tight as we are on this set. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because we're proud of it. We're pretty loose up here. And we hope you're loose out there at home because we're getting ready to watch basketball here on CBS. Coming up, Jim Nance. And Billy Packer with Arizona against North Carolina. We'll all see you at halftime. Enjoy the national semifinal. It doesn't get too much better than this, folks. We'll see you later.